So today I will talk about security of code pointer integrity, or CPI for short. This talk is prompted by the paper to be presented tomorrow that claims that an attacker can bypass CPI on x86 architecture. So let's analyze this claim in detail. First, I will tell you what code pointer integrity is. Uh, so CPI is a precise technique that protects programs against all control flow hijack attacks that are caused by memory corruption errors. Uh, CPI does it at just 8.4% overhead, and uh, so we presented CPI at OSDI last year along with its formalization and the proof of correctness. And uh, we also released a few different implementations of CPI open source. The key idea behind the this, this CPI design is to enforce memory safety for all um, direct or indir indirect pointers to code. In order to do so without imposing high performance overhead, we isolate all such sensitive data in a dedicated safe memory region. All accesses to the safe memory region are checked at runtime to enforce memory safety. And the region itself is isolated from the rest of memory accesses using instruction level isolation mechanism. So the tomorrow's paper focuses on this instruction level isolation mechanism. So let me describe it in more detail. The purpose of this mechanism is to ensure that all instructions in the program that are not meant to access the safe memory region cannot be subverted to do so anyway. So one way to enforce such isolation is to use software fault isolation. We described it in the CPI paper, but perhaps it didn't get uh, enough attention. So let me show how it works. We map the safe region into the upper half of the user space. And uh, such mapping allows us to enforce the isolation with just one single bit masking operation, which is very fast. This mechanism provides full and precise isolation guarantee, works on any architecture, and it has just 5% performance overhead. So let's go back to the claim from tomorrow's paper. Well, CPI is a technique that can be implemented in multiple different ways. And there are fundamentally just two ways to to show that the technique is broken. One can either show that the design of the technique is fundamentally flawed, or that the technique cannot be implemented in a fast and efficient way. Alternatively, although less, uh, although weaker, one can show at least that all existing implementation mechanisms are flawed beyond repair. Well, so fortunately, neither of these um, requirements were met so far. CPI has a proof of, correct, of correctness that has not been refuted, and CPI has fast and secure implementations, for example, the one that I just described. So for now, CPI remains secure. Along with our paper, we actually released uh, multiple different implementations of code pointer integrity, and some of these implementations provide probabilistic security guarantees. So tomorrow's paper actually attacks one of such implementations. Fortunately, we also have uh, implementations that provide much stronger probabilistic security guarantees, and even more importantly, we have implementations that provide precise security guarantees that do not depend on any randomization at all. You can find more details about this table in our project website. So to conclude, I um, described you uh, code pointer integrity, which is a technique that provides protection against all control flow hijack attacks that are based on memory error. And uh, to end, I would like to say thank you to the authors of tomorrow's paper, because I think that the analysis of uh, the CPI implementations that are based on uh, randomization and information handling that is present in that paper is very valuable. And uh, the paper highlighted multiple pitfalls in making such implementations secure. In fact, the paper prompted us to finally release our SFI-based implementation of CPI open source and to improve other implementations as well. So thank you for helping to make CPI better. And uh, if you have any question, you can find me afterwards. Thank you.